Welcome back to the John Trading channel. Bitcoin right now is at a major support level and it's looking like it's gonna have a huge break to the upside. Plus, Ethereum looks even more bullish than Bitcoin and the MACD indicator is signaling an upside breakout to this positive side very, very soon. I also have some really important crypto news to go through with you today, so make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video. Make sure you like the video, you're subscribed, and leave a comment if you're enjoying these daily videos. First, the two-week Bitcoin super trend tells us two really important things. One, meeting resistance around the trend flip is very healthy, and it's happening right now. Two, the trend resistance comes right before massive bull runs. You want to look like a genius? Just be patient, higher prices are coming. So we can see every time it comes up to this super trend level, it's a very common break to the upside. It happened here in 2016, happened here again in 2019, happened for a second time in 2020, and now we're right at this resistance level. It's looking like we might just have the tiniest drawdown, which potentially has already happened, before we make that massive break to the upside. It's extremely healthy for Bitcoin to do this type of movement. Next, the Bank of Russia expects significant growth in digital assets market. The Central Bank of Russia expects the volume of digital financial assets issued in the country to increase significantly in the future. The regulator believes that growth will be facilitated by the transparency and ease to use of these alternate instruments. Russian businesses have been exploring ways to fund their operations amid unprecedented Western sanctions, severely limiting their access to global finances. In early December, the first DFA deal denominated in the Chinese yuan was announced. So countries like China and Russia are not wanting the Western countries to limit their access to global finances. And one of the ways that they can do this is through digital assets such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and different cryptocurrencies. Next, MetaMask Terms of Service, we reserve the right to withhold taxes where required. In other words, if you don't pay your taxes, we reserve the right to withhold it for the IRS from your MetaMask wallet. That isn't what crypto is supposed to be. I got into crypto for self-governing, self-custody and decentralization. What's going on? So it's showing that a lot of these companies can potentially be influenced by the IRS, by the American government. So it's very, very scary to show that they would just instantly give all your details to the IRS so you have to pay taxes. Obviously tax fraud is not advised, but you don't want these companies just willy nilly giving out all your information to the IRS. That is very, very scary, especially with what's been happening with Ledger, the hardware wallet. Next, Ledger co-founder and former CEO says all hardware wallet manufacturers could make a firmware update to extract the seed phase, but you trust them not to do so. He says that even Trezor could make rogue firmware. Back in 2015 to 2016, he was talking, what if governments take control of Ledger? These questions are coming back in huge force, and that's a good thing because it forces people to think and understand how this works. And I completely agree with that. It's forcing people to actually look at what their hardware wallet software is using and are they able and really trustworthy to hold your secure seed phrase. Yes, firmware updates can extract your seed and you must trust us that we wouldn't do such a thing. Trezor is open source, but in theory they could push rogue firmware. 99% of their user base is updating without thinking. Very few users actually compile and verify the code themselves. But let's be honest, if we wanna make crypto mainstream, you can't expect every user to actually understand how to compile and verify the code for themselves. We need such a better system than what's currently running. And it's showing that Ledger and Next Trezor are maybe not to be trusted with your full C phrase that you could potentially be holding hundreds of thousands of dollars of Bitcoin that you think is safe, but they could be pushing rogue firmware in the future and you really just don't know. You're just trusting them. Lastly in Bitcoin news, as Teco, a firm offering minute Bitcoin BTC portions through a voucher system announced a $6 million seed funding. And you can see with this photo in the background, it basically looks like a receipt that you would get from a restaurant. Currently, if the Bitcoin transaction fees are even a dollar or two, and you're say going to buy a three or four, five dollar coffee, then that's a large percentage of your transaction. What we're ideally looking for is one of these companies to be able to come in and reduce that transaction fee, especially on tiny, tiny expenditures, which would then allow crypto 
to become more versatile and used in so many different instances, which would then increase the price as it's being used more across the world and more people need and want Bitcoin to be able to buy and sell things. Before I discuss the price, make sure you like the video, leave a comment if you're enjoying these daily videos and make sure you're subscribed for future content. Right now, Bitcoin is at this major support level and it really looks like it wants to break to the upside. We can see the MACD histogram is actually showing that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row, we've been continuously actually trending to the upside, obviously from below the zero line, but we are trending from the upside, which means that the volume and the momentum in the market right now has been showing that it's wanting to shift to the upside out of this trading range area. The reason that we just haven't done it quite yet as you can see down in this area, there were a lot of buyers as we got that massive wick up to the upside. But as I've been speaking about, this is the medium and short term EMA, which shows that in between that price is what I like to call the value zone. And you can see we've come into the value zone one, two and three times. And there are sellers in this area because they understand that this is the value zone. And once price reaches back at the average level, it would be a good place to take profits. But we're very strongly holding above this support level. We have support, 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 supporting in this area, supporting in this area, even all through this area we are supporting. If this red bar right here did close right on its low, then that would be bearish signal. But since we just got this wick below and then we close right in this support area, we never got a closure below the support area. It is showing that the long term momentum has been shifting to the upside. But this is key information that I do want to share with you. If you look at the exponential moving average on the four hourly time frame, back a couple of weeks ago, we were trending to the downside, which means selling in these areas and holding for a long period is the potential play because we have that downward sloping EMA. It is a high potential play to be selling and holding for a long time. But look what the EMA has been doing recently. You can see that we've basically been trending sideways. We've been slightly up, slightly down, slightly up, slightly down, which means we've been going that sideways direction, which actually signals that we are in a trading range. When you're in a trading range, People are going to be buying low and they're going to be selling high. That's why you cannot blame them. Every time we've come below this price, below, below, there's been a lot of buyers coming back into the market. And once we come into this area up here, you can see that has been a lot of sellers, sellers, sellers. And even now we have that quick down and quick up because we're in a trading range. You want to be buying low, selling high and scalping. Whereas a lot of people back in this area through here were holding for long periods of time because the EMA was trending to the downside, which signals that there's high probability shorts in the market. But since we have not been trending that way, we've been slightly up, slightly down, slightly up. People are just buying low and they're wanting to scalp. Buy low, sell high, scalp. That's the goal of a trading range and that's how you need to be trading. Plus, we've been in this trading range since the 13th of May, which is over a week now. So it's showing that if we've been trading in a trading range action for a week, we need to expect more trading range action in the future. We can't just say, oh yeah, it's gonna break out to the downside like back here. It's showing us that the EMA is not signaling us like it was back here. So we need to be in that trading range price action. Now coming over to Ethereum, it actually looks more bullish than Bitcoin. Back in these areas through here, we had that massive resistance level, even a resistance through here. And then what happens when resistance gets broken through, it has to flip as a support level. And what's been happening right now, right in this initial resistance broken through, it has now become this support level. Every time we come into this area, people are looking to buy. Resistance flip to support. We're now supporting, supporting. We try to have this breakdown, but bang, we supported back into the level and it's actually looking more bullish than Bitcoin. We have this MACD turning up as well, looking to actually break above the zero line in the next few days, which will then really signal that bullish momentum. But you can see a lot of times we're struggling to break down, struggling, struggling, struggling to actually break down. And now it's actually looking like a really solid green bar to then solidly push to the upside. There will be a little bit of resistance in this area. There will be a little bit of resistance in this area because there would have been buyers right on this bar right here. So, and they've been holding this entire time. So when price does eventually come back to this area, they'll be able to get out of their trade break even, which when you're buying in the market and you need to get out of your position, it is having to sell. So, so we will see some shorts in this area, but I'm expecting to break above that level and make a new higher high. Looking at Ethereum on the four hourly chart, we can see that we had this breakdown in level and we made a lower low 
in the MACD. Then we made another lower low in price, but we made a higher low on the MACD indicator, which signals to us that's a divergence pattern because the price is going down, but the MACD indicator is now signaling to the upside. That is a perfect divergence pattern. And what that shows is there's a lot of momentum buyers in this area to actually push it to the upside. And that's definitely what we got. But you can see that we're actually in this trading range and it's easier to see than we saw on Bitcoin. You can see up in these areas up here, this is the top of the trading range. Down here is the bottom of the trading range. So every time we're coming down, every time we're coming up, people are buying low, selling high, and they're scalping. They're getting out of their position. As I said before, this EMA through here was trending to the downside, which shows that we can hold shorts for a longer period of time and expect prices to continue down. But through here, we have slightly up, slightly down, slightly up, slightly down. The exponential moving average is sideways, so it's showing that we are in sideways trading range action. When we do that, we need to buy low, we need to sell high, and we need to be scalping. You can see that every single time. As soon as we come right back into this area, people are selling. Once we come back into this area, people are buying. People are not expecting massive breakouts to the upside or the downside just yet because price is showing us right now that we're in that EMA, sideways trading range action. Again, confirmed by the exponential moving average. So you need to trade what most traders are doing. For the last week, we've been in that sideways trading range action. We can't just expect that massive upside breakout until price confirms it. What I am expecting is a break above this level. And what happens if this is initially a resistance level and it gets broken through, then what's going to happen? Price is going to travel up to this area, come up to here, and then come back to this resistance level, use it as support before it then makes that massive rocket up. And that's the real confirmation that I'm looking for. We need this resistance level to get broken. Once resistance gets broken through, it will then flip of a support level and there'll be a lot of buyers in this area. Once we get that breakout, get that retest, that's the entry we're all looking for. So you need to be patient with the price. You need to wait for this confirmation. We really hope that in the next four hourly push is going to be in that one to the upside. But again, you can't just guess. This isn't a guessing game. You need to play the high probabilities and there will still be sellers in here. But if we get enough buyers and we can get that break, then that's the trade I'm looking for, support, and then we get that massive breakout to the upside. That's all I have for you for today. Make sure you've liked the video, make sure you're subscribed, and leave a comment if you're enjoying these daily crypto videos.